Good evening, I wrap Steen of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up and this is for Thursday evening, the 3rd of December, 2020th. I'm worn out from this week. What a fun week, but what a trying week it's been on everything that has been going on. Um, a lot of news today and you'll see it, you know, you're going to get the big jobs numbers re tomorrow. We're looking for additional jobs coming back and the employment rate down to 6.7%. That's quite a drop and quite an accomplishment given the COVID that we're in. Today we heard that uh, the Pfizer BioNTech uh, vaccine, only half the dosages that were originally thought would be available are going to be available right away. It's the logistics, it's the way to produce them, problems, they're doing it as fast as they can. So as the market's trying to figure out what to do with that, when the news came out, stock indices took a tumble, they came back because the news isn't that the vaccine doesn't work. The news is that we're not going to get it as quick as we need it. It's also terrible because of the pandemic that's broken out. I mean, if you live in LA, you live in Chicago, New York, it's unbelievable. The hospitals are getting overwhelmed. In some cases, LA County, uh, LA, they're closing down businesses left and right, and they may go into what's even a further shutdown. It is out of control. Travel for Thanksgiving, this is it. Dr. Fauci today came out and asked Americans, don't travel for Christmas. You're just gonna keep prolonging this. And speaking of him, a great piece of news, President-elect Biden has asked Dr. Fauci to head up the team just as he did under President Trump. Assuming, don't get mad at me, assuming President-elect Biden gets the electoral votes, at least we have continuity going right through there. That's what I meant to say. All right, you can see that you're getting a bit of a bounce in the gold and the silver and come back to the rallies in the stock indices. In the energy market, OPEC, I didn't mention that, they did reach OPEC and OPEC plus, as they call it, an agreement uh, to increase production in January by 500,000 barrels, not decrease it, 500,000 barrel increase, how they'll modify it, who gets it, they didn't say. And then each month for the next two months after that, they're going to go month by month and have a meeting to discuss what to do. So it's interesting. It shows that there was compromise in everybody's part. But do you really need more oil at this point in time? Bonds and notes still getting a bit of a rally tonight. <clears throat> so as we look at a weekly area chart of closes, first off, if the market were to close here, it's an all-time high close, and you are up 34 handles so far for the week. On a daily bar chart, I mentioned the other day, you're starting to get narrower and narrower ranges, and you are. You can see what they're doing yourself. The pattern of the market. I am not certain that the right pattern is higher lows and higher highs. Remember, you did have this big break low. I have never figured out what to do with that. Every time I think my hands, I've got it, I don't have it. So when I see that, I, I basically wait for the pattern to straighten itself out. That's just the way that I've decided to handle it. But for lack of better things to say, we'll call it higher lows and higher highs. Certainly the bias is up as the market's over the 18-day average. And it's right into the key resistance at the upper Bollinger Band, where I've told you that is where this market's run into a roadblock. It's pushing on it, but it's not pushing out of it. There's a very very big difference between the two, but this is important. You cannot count tonight, Friday. So let's take Friday off the chart. Both numbers were over 80 for Thursday, both numbers over 80 for Wednesday, and both over 80 for Tuesday. That's an embedded reading. You need a minimum of three days. So until the red line closes back under 80 on pullbacks, I am expecting to see the pros buy the market looking to pump out against the upper Bollinger Band. When I come to the NASDAQ, same thing, I think. You get rid of Friday because you don't know where you're going to close. So Thursday, both numbers over 80. Come on, over 80 on Wednesday. What about the day before? Mm -mm. You need today, Friday's action, to say you're going to embed. Where are you at? Key resistance, the upper Bollinger Band. Why is that the case? Because 95% of the time, the market will trade within the black lines. It's an algorithm that is designed to do it. If you want to know more about the formula, go to uh, Investopedia. You go to John Bollinger's website. He tells you what he did when he created it. He knows better than me. I know that I have my own unique way of working with it that I did learn largely 
from John, reading his, what he did, had him on my TV shows many years ago, uh, and became a big fan of this algorithm. And it, it certainly became a mainstay of what I do, so kudos to him. In the Dow Jones, higher lows, higher highs, I see resistance at the upper band. I see the trend is up, but overbought. Overbought is a flag to me. It's like, you know, when you're driving down the highway and you got road construction, you know, speed, you're gonna get a $100 fine, $300, $1,000, whatever it is. It's overbought, that's the fine, I don't wanna to touch it. In the Russell, still with an embedded reading. Until it's lost, I say the pros are still buying. Now, this is a pretty hard chart. You've still got the lower highs, lower lows. It's trying to figure out what to do next. If it can break through this resistance, then the 1891 level becomes a resistance point. In the VIX cash, you lost the embedded reading. Sometimes the VIX moves ahead of the market. If this stays lost, that means these numbers are due to climb, certainly to the 2269 level. That would be my guess as to where it's going because when you lose an embedded reading, if it stays lost the next morning, right away, it's gotta be lost. If it uh, re-embed, re if it doesn't, I think you're going to that 18 day average. Well, typically, when the VIX goes up, the stock indices go down because that's the concept of it. Admittedly, it's at a low level. We'll see what happens, but it's a warning sign. T-bond market, lower highs, lower lows, first resistance, 173.19, but you'd have to risk way up over 175. I don't think you get, you get a lot of people that want to put $2,000 at risk. Your December 4th tomorrow, the week after we get the uh, FOMC meeting, remember that, December 15th and 16th are the uh, two days of the FOMC meeting. Uh, in bonds, this is the resistance point. In the 10-year notes, I, I said bonds. 10-year note right here. The risk would be bet getting back over. I'll give you the number here. Uh, 138.08. Now, that's a little more tolerable for traders uh, right through there, as you can see. So I do think the pros are probing the short side. Support will be back, in my opinion, at 137.08, about four ticks in front of the Bollinger Band right now, all because that's where a window envelope number would go. In the dollar index, three days under now in a row, the uh, lower Bollinger Band, I don't think that you press on that whatsoever. When we come over to the euro currency, I'm looking for this market to roll to the right-hand side. You've got now four days in a row over uh, three on a close, but four if you count the current trading over that. I give the market a 2% chance of staying over the black band, around 98% chance that it will fall back to the right-hand side. It doesn't mean I'm bearish. Until you lose the embedded reading, I'm just looking for it to pull back, and I think the pros want to buy the market. In the end, we're still getting these whipsaws that are amazing, lower and low, higher and high, all against the 18-day average for the longest period of time, and it's just violent trading. And now in uh, Bitcoin, we get a move here, as you can see, where the market is trying to embed again. So the trend is back to up, higher lows, higher highs. It made a run, as we talked about when it lost the embedded reading to the 18-day average, held it, and has given a new potential signal. You'd have to take out 1874 to break that part, but it's not embedded yet, so it's just very overbought. In the Brent versus WTI crude, well, you can see that the market likes the differential in favor of what the Brent is doing, and when you come to the charts, you don't have a trend, but you kept the embedded reading. Next target, if the market can keep this up, 5002, uh, the, the pros, I think, will bail if the red line closes under 80, but it hasn't done that. In WTI, same thing. The market likes what it's seeing. Resistance, 47.22. So the key is going to be, in my opinion, not WTI, but what Brent does. It seems to be the one that is ruling the day. Heating oil, again, you've got to keep your eye on the embedded reading. That's, that's the play here. I'd like to see how these markets look in the morning after Asia gets a chance to digest what OPEC did and then Europe. By the time it arrives back to us, higher and lower, the news is baked into the market and everybody has their own understanding of what's going on. Natural gas fell apart because when the EIA number came out at 9.30 this morning, it showed a draw of 1 billion cubic feet. Folks, that's nothing. 
At this time of year, normally, five-year average, we take off about 45 billion cubic feet. We didn't. We did nothing like that. Even the week before was a, a better number, you know, a year before. This is terrible, and it's too much supply, and the weather forecasts are for mild December. So the supplies are just killing it. That's what's going on through that part of the market. Now, I want to remind you all, uh, every now and then I, I come up with a special offering, and I waited for Cyber Monday to end, and I waited for the uh, Black Friday to end. A lot of you like my charting course or want to buy it. I'm going to give it away for free. Yeah, you heard me, for free. How you get it is you buy any of my research, a one-year subscription. The charting course itself goes for $199.95. I'm assuming uh, that you, know, you want to take the course, learn how to do this yourself. You can give it away as a gift, just let us know. You go buy any of our research, a one-year subscription, we will put that in, and one-year subscriptions, they're as low as $156. You heard me. So you're getting a course that is worth more than the one-year subscription. I can't be any simpler. It's not going to stay up very long. I want to do this. I want to get a lot of you into that. The more I do, the more you understand, the more you learn how to do it. And by the way, in the charting course, it's all videos. So it's six hours of videos. See what I do, you do the same. I take the name off charts at times because to me a chart pattern's a chart, and then I'll put them back. Why do I do that? I don't want you to think, oh, this is what gold did, this is what this ETF did, this is what this spider did, uh, 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 uh. I want you to look at the pattern. The pattern is the pattern. The moment you start thinking you know, and you think you've got the fundamentals, you're probably behind the eight ball. Let the chart do it. The key is how do you interpret it? How do you do all this? Just go to our website, www.irapstein.com, and from there, go to research, away you go. Buy any of those. We'll make sure you get it if you're on our mailing list. Tomorrow, I'll probably send out a mailer on it, but anybody that buys a one-year subscription now, uh, that's yours. It's not forever. I will tell you when that's over. Have a good day.